Okay, welcome. My name is Danilo Bonilla. I'm one of the advisors at the International Education Office, and we're very happy to bring you this special webinar regarding study abroad um, as an econ major or a business econ major. And as you can see on the screen, uh, my contact information is there, my email, our website, and the countries that I deal with. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get started on the next slide. Okay, a nice warm welcome. Again, happy Friday. It's October 30th, 2020, 11.30 a.m. And we are recording this and it will be on our YouTube channel. Okay, so the UCLA International Education Office is the one-stop shop for all study abroad opportunities. We have many advisors and many counselors for different programs that will help you throughout the whole process. And we can also connect you with returning students who have come back from abroad. Currently, uh, at the end of this session, we have three great returning students that will talk about their experiences. So stay tuned. They will start talking at around 11.45 a.m. this morning. So as you know, this week is the Global International, the Global Learnings Opportunities Week. And we have many webinars and many opportunities to integrate and talk over Zoom. So it's great. And if you missed any of these uh, activities or webinars, go ahead and log into our website and you will see them there and on our YouTube channel. Okay, so here's the agenda. Welcome again. Uh, we're going to be talking about COVID-19, the study abroad 101 refreshers, how to study abroad in economics and business economics, some sample programs and questions and answers with our students. We also have uh, three counselors from the economics uh, department online and they will help us uh, answer some questions at the end. And then also during the presentation, they will uh, be uh, reading some slides for us regarding their department. Okay, study abroad and COVID-19. So as of today, Friday, October 30th, 2020, 11.30 a.m., uh, programs are scheduled to run for summer. Our office, the main office, uh, UCEAP offices, and our partner universities abroad are continuously monitoring safety abroad for our students, our staff, and our faculty. And we will keep you up to date. Definitely keep um, abreast of our, of our news and information. Take a look at our website, again, UCLA, International Education website. And we are very considerate about the uh, kind of like the no-go, go, no-go no decisions. Uh, for example, for UCEAP, for one of our programs, we can enroll you at UCLA uh, and also enroll you for abroad, just in case uh, something happens and we have to cancel the program. So again, we're, we are trying to be as flexible as possible with our, all our students. And the same thing, we are asking you students, please <laughs> be flexible with us because as you know, there are a lot of things up in the air right now. For certain programs, we have some alternative, uh, virtual alternative programs. Then the last thing I want to say about this slide is that make sure that you apply your, for your passport or you, you renew your passport right away. Okay, 101 refreshers. So last Monday we had a great webinar. It was called Study Abroad 101. And some of the topics that we, we, uh, we talked about in detail were program types, credit transfers to UCLA, cost and funding, application process, timelines, deadlines. So hopefully you got to see that. If not, you can go to the website, our website and take a look at the video. What's gonna be covered in this special webinar is uh, the actual economics major guidelines and uh, programs uh, that are good for, for uh, economics. And again, questions and answers with our uh, returning students. Okay, so there are basically five types of programs. The first type is the traditional university immersion program where you study at a local university with local students and other UC peers. The other one is called the UCLA faculty led programs. And those are basically programs, uh, courses on the go with UCLA professors during the summer. We also have the internship research abroad programs, which you can get academic credit for. Again, a great opportunity. We also have something called cohort programs where you study abroad with a cohort of local students and local uh, university students and uh, the entire cohort comes back to UCLA uh, for summer session C. We'll go into the, uh, some details uh, in the next couple of slides. And then the last type of program that we want to highlight is the UC Center programs, University of California Center programs, which are programs exclusively for UC students which have theme courses. So that's just a sample of the five major 
types of programs that we have. We have others, other hybrid programs as well. But again, just a really quick reminder. Okay, uh, financial aid. So all eligible students um, can receive financial aid for UC um, affiliated programs only. Uh, and just keep in mind that it will be a combination of grants, scholarships, and loans. During the summer, there are some limitations and some grant funding is limited for summer programs. The other thing is make sure that you, when you're abroad, you take a minimum of eight units and make sure that you do the uh, FAFSA DREAM Act by the priority deadline. Okay, when can you apply? So you can apply now as early as nine months. You can apply as late as four months, but we highly, highly suggest to apply as soon as possible for many reasons. You know, some of the deadlines are coming up, November, December, January. And are these programs competitive? Generally not. Uh, most programs are on a first come first serve basis, but just keep in mind there are a few programs that do have limited space. So keep in mind. And uh, yeah, especially for UCEAP, if you're interested, the applications are, are open now for summer and fall. Okay, so studying abroad as an econ major or as a business econ major. So um, you're not obligated to study in your major, by the way. You can do a little bit of GE, foreign language. You can take upper division credit for personal development or professional development. And the good thing is that you actually are making progress towards your degree because you're getting direct credit or transfer credit on your UCLA transcript with UC programs. And um, just keep in mind that a lot of these programs are not designed around your major. So it's a good idea to also, just in case, you know, um, be open and flexible in, in search for other areas. But, but if you do want to study within your major with economics, uh, definitely the first step is definitely take a look at our website, the UCLA International Education Office website, uh, UCEAP slash academics. You'll see three important uh, items there. One of them is the academic planning form. The other one is the college, of, uh, the college and school requirements and the major academic plan. So always refer to this website for updated information, please. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to Julie Plotkin, who is one of the advisors for the econ and business econ department. And she's gonna go through a couple of slides for us. Hello, everyone. I'm so glad you could join us today. So I'm going to quickly go through um, just some basic information about studying abroad. So a lot of students in econ and busy econ do study abroad. Uh, in general, we will accept up to three upper division courses from outside UCLA toward your major. Um, we have no lower division uh, limit, but there are certain courses you can and cannot take. So, you know, if you see, um, I don't want to do this slide like word by word. You can look at it um, at the, in the YouTube, but students do take uh, some of our core courses, one, two, and 11, mostly at London School of Economics in the summer, but that's an odd program in that it's only three weeks. So you'd want to decide if you want to take a very important core course for three weeks only. Um, 102 Intermediate Macro, people take it LSE, some other uh, institutions. Our 106s, which are busy econ courses, some econ electives. And the econ electives don't have to be courses that are offered at UCLA, but they have to be, generally have intermediate micro or macro as prerequisites. Um, we do tend to make an exception for one course that focuses on the economy, or maybe even more than one course that focuses on the economy of the country or the region you're studying in. Um, some of those have lower division prerequisites only, so that's why we limit it to one. Um, if there's a more advanced course, then we might consider a second course. Uh, your econ electives don't have to be courses that are offered at UCLA, but we want them to have um, certain prerequisites. So example, if there were a transportation econ course, we don't offer that at UCLA, but there's a chance that we would accept it toward your major. Okay, next slide. Okay. Okay, so um, there's a, pet a, pet a petition process. So we want you to submit the syllabus or syllabi for the actual term and actual instructors with whom you take the courses. We don't pre-approve courses. So like if you send our office 
syllabi from the previous term, we're not going to review them. On the other hand, there are two year windows of approvals for regular um, year courses. So you could contact our office and say, okay, I'm considering going to Maastricht University in the Netherlands. Can you tell me if there are any courses that have already been approved? And then, you know, you'll know those are approved, but even if they are approved, I recommend that you get something in writing from our office stating that we approved your courses because otherwise we're going to be looking for you to submit a syllabus and uh, when you sit, submit that syllabus via the message center then we will have our faculty evaluate the syllabus or the syllabi and get back to you and let you know if they're okay so our faculty are reviewing for content only they're not reviewing for uh, units and upper division. So it will be up to you to make sure that each course is worth a minimum of four upper division units if you're trying to fulfill an upper division requirement. If it's a pre-major requirement like Econ 1, 2, or 11, you want to make sure it's at least four units. Um, let's see, what else? Um, so you're going to submit the syllabus to us and via the message center or the syllabi. Um, it can take up to three weeks for a decision. So you're going to want to send those to us as soon as possible. Um, most of the time, you're not going to be able to get those until you get to the university. Um, so just you know, keep that in mind. But you could check with us ahead of time to see if the university that you're considering is a, an institution that a lot of students have gone to and that we've accepted a lot of courses from. So let's say if it's Bocconi University in Milan um, or University College London, we're pretty certain that there will be econ courses that you could take. So, you know, as I said, you might want to check with us ahead of time. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so there's certain courses you cannot take abroad. So Econ 103 and 103 L econometrics, um, even though there might be an econometrics course elsewhere, our course has a lab and you won't find that lab elsewhere. The same as our new 104 data science course, you won't find the lab course. Um, our 106s, which are busy econ courses like finance, game theory, pricing and strategy investments, you might find some equivalents elsewhere. Um, so we would accept an equivalent of a 106, but not for your lab requirement. So for, for busy econ, you need to take two lab courses in addition to 103 and 104. So let's say you find an econ 106 F equivalent. That's a finance course. You could satisfy a 106 or an econ elective, but it would not satisfy your lab requirement. Um, independent studies, we have Econ 199A, which is where you write a research paper one-on-one -on -one with the Department of Economics faculty member. Um, we won't accept toward your major an independent study you do with a faculty member at another institution. Same as an internship. I mean, there's some great internship opportunities, and I don't know if that's anything that Danilo could maybe just quickly bring up later on, but we don't accept internships toward our major. Even our own course, our Econ 195A course does not count toward, um, toward Econ or Biz Econ. Management electives, um, I didn't man, uh, mention at the previous slide. So, you know, most students don't take management courses abroad to try to apply toward um, Econ or Biz Econ. Um, if you're going to try to find some accounting courses abroad, then you'd want to check with the minor and accounting office for evaluation. Um, just keep in mind that I believe that for the minor and accounting, all upper division management courses must be taken at UCLA. And probably also for the minor in entrepreneurship, um, those entrepreneurship courses, we don't accept entrepreneurship courses from, um, <coughs> excuse me, from other institutions. And then English Comp 131B is a business writing course that's required for business econ. And um, 
you need to take that at UCLA. I guess there's a slight chance you might find an equivalent elsewhere. Um, you could check with us, but it's more than likely that you'll have to take um, English Comp 131B for BizEcon at UCLA. Okay, next slide. Okay, so, you know, we don't have a time frame for when you take, you go study abroad, but you're probably better off having completed Econ 11, 101, and 102 prior to studying abroad, because that will provide you with more choices of Econ courses. Um, that being said, you know, we do have people going in summer um, and taking some core courses. Uh, just keep in mind that you have to finish your pre-major by 135 units. So that's for busy econ or econ. We don't count your AP units or units you entered UCLA with toward that 135, but you know, we do, we are strict about the 135 unit limit. So if you study abroad before you get into the major, you want to keep that in mind. Uh, you also want to keep in mind. Um, if you're going to be looking for internships and full-time positions, uh, most summer internships, um, the interviews are usually like December, January, February for the following summer, but there are some sectors that interview very early and like at the beginning of fall quarter. So you'd want to look into that to see what the time frame is for those internship for the recruiting. There's a lot of on-campus interviews usually obviously right now that's not happening but you know keep that in mind and keep in mind the the time frame for full-time recruiting and if you'd be able to recruit via zoom um, for an internship or full-time if you're studying abroad um, and just you know keep in mind when the there's a minimum number of courses that are or units that are required for each study abroad program and you'd want to meet that minimum, but you know, if you're going to take like three or four econ courses when you're studying abroad and you're going to be in your books the whole time and not be able to enjoy your experience, then you might want to think twice about, you know, about that. Because if you're not going to be able to experience the culture and et cetera, then, you know, there's not as much a point of going. So there's a, you know, a happy balance in terms of satisfying econ electives, but not overwhelming yourself. Okay, next slide. Okay, okay. that's all I, oh, let me just say, and it's at the end, but we're gonna go through at the end. Um, we have a website, uh, on our website, we have a lot of information about um, study abroad and the process, so definitely, check that out as well as, you know, feel free to contact us through the message center. Okay, thank you very much, Julie. I really appreciate that. So now we're gonna go through some sample programs really quickly. Uh, so for UCLA summer travel study programs, uh, there are no econ programs, but the department did want me to highlight this program. If you are interested in satisfying your language two requirement, literacy and cultural analysis or your diversity, uh, requirement and it's in uh, Copenhagen. So this is just one option. Could I just interrupt you, um, Danilo? Yes. Um, in the past, the Anderson School has offered Management 109 and 127 C in Europe, and we've accepted those for BizEcon. So I don't know if they plan to offer it this upcoming summer, but that's uh, you know something to look into. Okay. Thank you. Let's see. Uh, so the other program is the Global Internships Program, which is a, a relatively a new program. And um, we have some interesting locations, uh, Colombia, Bogota, Medellin, Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. And these are not really econ courses, but again, if you want to diversify, uh, you can do an internship abroad and get credit. The other one is the Global Cities Program, which is part of UCLA Summer Sessions and the UCLA International Education Office. And this is the cohort program where you basically study either in Milan, uh, Barcelona, or Amsterdam with a group of local uh, students there and uh, UCLA students. You go abroad for the summer, for the early summer, and then you come back to UCLA. Okay, and then really quickly, some of the UCAP sample programs. So one program is uh, Hong Kong, 
And this one here is upper division coursework in English. You get to enter, uh, intermingle with the local students and uh, they have some sample courses there, as you can see. Okay, the other one is um, Yonsei University in Korea. Again, English speaking university, upper division courses. There's a sample course listing there and um, also very popular option. And then the last one that I wanna mention is uh, Milano, Italy. Uh, Bocconi University and again courses are in English and you get a chance to meet local students at the university. Okay, so those were just a few. There are dozens of other opportunities. Okay, perfect. So at this point, go ahead, uh, our returning students, go ahead and turn on your cameras and your videos and we are very excited to help you to, uh, to host you. So let's see. So one of the questions that I have uh, for you Basically, um, where did you study? What courses did you take? How did they come in? Fulfill your, um, your econ major. And um, let's see, maybe we can start with Chloe. Yeah, thanks Danilo. Um, my name is Chloe. I'm an econ major. I studied abroad this past fall at King's College London. And I took four classes because it's a semester system. So I took two classes completely unrelated to my major. And then I took industrial organization and um, introduction to entrepreneurship. So industrial organization came back as fulfilling an upper div econ elective. And then um, entrepreneurship, not really, I'm not an entrepreneurship minor. So that just came back as like a regular class, but um, it was really nice to be able to fulfill at least one econ upper div while I was abroad. Perfect. Thank you, Chloe. Uh, we'll go ahead and go with Hannah. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Hannah. I'm a fourth year economics and public affairs double major. Um, I studied abroad this past winter quarter in Barcelona and had the best time. Um, I took four classes. Um, it was a quarter system and I chose to, or quarter program, and I chose to do it winter because of um, what Julie mentioned. I was recruiting during fall, so it worked really well with my schedule. Um, and I took four classes. So I took economic global order, international economics, um, doing business in the Middle East and Africa and industrial organization. Um, and three of those four would transfer back to UCLA as credit, um, which was really great, especially as a double major, um, making, wanting, really wanting to make sure that a lot of my uh, credits counted. All right, thank you very much, Hannah. And up next, uh, Antonio. Uh, hey everybody, I'm Antonio. I'm a fourth year economics major. Uh, I studied abroad at the University of Bologna in the fall of 2019. Um, so I believe I technically took five classes. The first one, they had us in an introductory language class. So we would, uh, we spent about four or five weeks learning Italian and that counted towards my language requirement. And then I took four classes at the university, one of those being an independent study project. Uh, and then the other two were economics classes. I took health economics and policy in low and middle income countries. And then I took health and behavior economics. I only the health economics and policy in low and middle income countries, one counted towards an upper div. The other one I don't think did. Um, and then the last one I took was just kind of a poli sci class for fun. Uh, yeah. All right, thank you very much, Antonio. Um, let's see, let me just quickly go to the next slide. And then in the meantime, uh, if anybody has questions, uh, maybe Robert or some of the other panelists can help us uh, bring up the questions, please. And then really quickly, uh, before we do that, you know, uh, we have a listserv, so make sure that you scan or look at this uh, website to get updates and information. And then as you know, uh, we're, we're, we're Working virtually, we're not open. Uh, we're not open in, in Murphy Hall, so uh, just keep that in mind. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook. Um, we have drop-in advising, and then I do want to uh, emphasize this this slide here about the econ department and some of their guidelines, information, and these very important uh, uh, web links. So yes, uh, questions about anything for the panelists, for Julie, for the econ advisors, uh, maybe one of us, uh, Robert, can you maybe read us the questions? Yeah, uh, no problem at all. Um, the first question uh, we have, um, it says, will, will the London School of Economics be open to UCLA students? So far it's only open to Berkeley students. 
Uh, yes, so that is the case right now. Um, go ahead and send us this in the email and we can maybe chat a little bit more offline, but that is a current, uh, the current agreement with UCEAP. A lot of students study abroad at LSE in the summer, so it's an option. I think the limitation for Berkeley, if you um, correct me if I'm wrong, Danilo, is for the regular year, but summer, I think it's open. Yes, summer is open. Yes, thank, 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 thank you, Julie. And we have uh, one more question. Uh, if I want to study abroad in my last quarter, would you recommend to finish my major before then? Would it be risky to try and use my last quarter to finish a last elective and try and finish my major due to not knowing classes are approved and whatnot? I can answer. I, I mean, if you can finish your major before, I would recommend it because that will take a lot of pressure off you and not make it so that you might or might not be able to find a course. So you know, if you're in a position to finish before your last quarter, finish the major, I would recommend it. That was the final question. Okay, so um, let's see. I think, I think there was a question from one of the attendees. They wanted to hear the classes that Hannah, Chloe, and Antonio took. Could, could each of you just quickly restate either your classes or perhaps uh, that question could be sent to Danilo and then he could have the three of you type those and send them on? Or yeah, or the returning students, go ahead and just uh, let us know again the classes. We, we have some time. Yeah, I can start. We put them in the, in the chat. So hopefully you can also like screenshot to see them. But um, I took economic global order, international economics, doing business in the Middle East and Africa and industrial organization. I took industrial organization as well, um, introduction to entrepreneurship, ethics and logic. Um, I completed an independent study project under a professor at the university. Uh, I took health economics and policy in low and middle income countries, health and behavioral economics, politics, violence and crime and introductory Italian. Great, thank you. Uh, Robert, did we get any more questions? Uh, no, uh, we did not. Uh, we, we did get a, a, a nice thank you note. Okay, <laughs> great, great. And then the last couple of questions that I have for the returning students is maybe if you can tell us a little bit about some of the similarities and differences between UCLA and your university, you know, maybe like in a couple of words. Any similarities or differences? Again, maybe we'll start with uh, maybe Chloe. Yeah, so um, I think one of the similarities was that it was lecture style. So I was in lectures. They're maybe a little bit smaller, anywhere from like 50 to 100 students. And then I would say the main difference is the relationship with the professors. Um, most of the professors talk to you um, and want you to call them by their first name and the um, office hour type relationship is a lot more casual and students have more casual um, and frequent relationships with their professors. Nice, thank you, Chloe. Uh, we'll go with Hannah now. Hey, Danilo? Yes. We do have a few more questions. I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah, go ahead, yes, um, go ahead. The next question is, a uh, student would like to know that the key word for today, and um, that's believed regarding the, uh, the online scavenger. Oh, yes. Um, the key word is Matsuru. I'm not sure why the slide did not uh, show. So the, word, the key word is Matsuru, M-A-T-S-U-I, I believe. Sorry about that. <laughs> And the next question says, where can we find the recording? I missed the initial part of the, of the panel. So this will be on the UCLA EAP website on the demand section and on the UCLA IEO YouTube channel. You'll, you'll see a link and we'll put it up there by this evening. The next question says, would you advise studying abroad before or after officially entering I'm sorry, officially, I don't know what happened to the question. Before officially entering the, the econ major. 
Good question. Uh, I would recommend after if you can, because you have the 135 unit limit and you'll also have more choices of econ courses. On the other hand, if you've taken 101 and 102 and you haven't taken 41 and you could still finish the pre-major by 135 units, then you could go before you get in. There's one more question. Um, is there a deposit you need to pay? For UC, uh, for the summer travel study program, there is a deposit uh, when you sign up on November 18th, um, it's $200. But for UCEAP, there's no deposit and you have usually until like April 1st or May 1st to decide if you wanna go or not. Okay, I believe that was the last question. Uh, yes, that was the last question. Okay, perfect. So maybe we'll continue with uh, Hannah and, and Antonio, a little bit about differences and uh, similarities with UCLA and your home university or your host university. Yeah, I can I can touch on a few. I think one of the things that I'll also echo, um, Chloe, is that I think the classes were a lot smaller. So I would say some of my classes range from like 10 to uh, 100 people, which was really nice. So it was definitely much more of like an intimate setting. Um, I would also say that there were, uh, at least in Spain, like less tests um, in terms of like the, the quarter was not as like intense throughout, but more emphasis towards like the end of the quarter, which was really nice. Um, I think that like the final was the most part of my grade for most of my classes, like a huge portion and some of my classes didn't even have a midterm. Um, and maybe would just have small assignments throughout. And then the last thing that I would say is different is the grading system. So they don't use like letter grades um, and they use like a scale from like one through 10. So that was just a little bit of an adjustment, but um, honestly worked out. Uh, it was something I was a little bit nervous about, but it was totally fine. Perfect, thank you, Hannah. How about Antonio? Yeah, so I, I gotta say, I feel like the university I was at was very, very different from the experience I've had with the UCLA Econ Department. Um, my classes were also much smaller, so I don't think I really had a class bigger than 30. Um, for me, one thing that was particularly unique is at the University of Bologna, if you choose to study abroad there, the classes you take are all master's classes technically within that university. Um, and frankly, that wasn't, and it, it wasn't something that put you over your head, but the classes were all pretty good. And like uh, Hannah was saying, the grading scale was quite different. Instead of kind of being like A, B, C, there was like a zero to 30 grading scale. And we didn't really have any sort of like homework assignments or midterms. It was just kind of you show up to class and you have a final at the end of it. And it was very, very straightforward. It was a lot, also a lot more relaxed. Um, so yeah, it was overall a very enjoyable experience to take economics courses. Wow. Well, I want to thank uh, the returning students very much. Um, thank you, really appreciate it. Hopefully our applicants are a little bit less nervous about applying, a little bit more knowledgeable, and they can see your, um, your names and they can always reach out to you. So the final thing is, um, so for the econ department advisors or the returning panels, any final words, advice? I think we just have maybe one more minute. Anything else, any final questions, anything? Just try to plan ahead. Um, because you'll want to, you know, enrollment for winter quarters starting and so you want to uh, plan ahead so you could take courses before going abroad and you'll have the most options abroad. Thank you, Julie. Um, I would say do a little bit of research into the program that you're going to do and see what other students think. Um, I feel like I got very lucky with my program, um, but I know that the style of what pe like what people's experience is like very much differed from university to university. So I met some, uh, I met some people that were UC students studying in Scotland and they were in a like crazy intense program for like physics or something. And it very much, you know, from what I've heard, it seems like it, the experience varies much uh, program to program. So definitely do a little bit of research. Perfect, perfect. Okay, well, thank you so much. Enjoy your Friday. We're gonna put this on YouTube and on our website. You can always review it at your leisure. And um, again, thank you so much. And um, we're signing off.
Thank you again, panelists and returning students and Robert for reading our questions. All right, bye.